as new technology comes out, you got to think of how you can incorporate it in your working environment. And this is something that we've had to do since uh, arguably the beginning of engineering. You know, when mainframes went to servers, when bare metal servers went to virtualization, when virtualization went to cloud, when sysadmins on the Windows side started to use PowerShell, when uh, containers came out. Point being is we've always seen this trend where, okay, new thing comes out. And there are two groups of people. There are the people that think it's going to take my job. <laughs> it doesn't. And there are the people that are like, okay, let me figure out how to incorporate this into my environment. And arguably that's what AI is doing right now. And I found a couple of different use cases from like the DevOps cloud platform engineering side. One of those use cases is something that I'm building out currently where the end goal is to have, let's say, containerized workloads and they can deploy anywhere. They can deploy in Azure Container Apps, they can deploy in GCP Cloud Run, they can deploy in EKS, AKS, wherever, based on current performance and cost per region. So what I wanna essentially say at the end is, I have a containerized workload, figure out where to deploy it based on performance and cost. So for example, maybe, I'm just making this up here, U.S. East 1 is better pricing than U.S. West 1 because, you know, GPUs are cheaper in U.S. East 1 than they are in U.S. West 1. Again, I'm making these numbers up, right? I'm just saying the way that I want it to work. But the starting point is I want to be able to create a AI agent to kind of, you know, start to funnel in some information about the regions and cost and performance. So let's go ahead and take a look at what I wrote up so far. All right, so I already wrote this code here. Let's go ahead and step through it. Now, first things first, there's this project called Crew AI, which I really, really like because it's essentially a list of libraries and wrappers and packages to create an agent versus you, you know, writing all that out via API calls. So I import agent, task, crew, process, and LLM. And I'm going to go through that in a second here. Then I import crew AI tools. And what that allows me to do is it allows me to use these website search tools and Serper. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but I think I am. So um, again, I'll go through that in a second here. And then I'm importing OS because I'm using some environment variables. Okay. So open AI, it's using... Crew AI is using OpenAI underneath the hood, so I need an API key. I did spend the five bucks to have more calls available because I kept hitting my limits when I was testing this out, so I spent the five bucks and I implemented it. Serper, this is free, you don't have to pay for it. It's essentially a Google searcher, that's what it is. So I have my main function here. I haven't split up all these workloads into their own separate functions. So I'm doing a couple of different things here. I'm specifying Serper, okay, and I'm specifying the website search tool. I'm gonna to show how that's used in a second here. And then I'm creating a third variable for the LLM that I wanna use, which in this case, I'm specifying the GPT-4 model and the temperature of 0.2. When you specify the temperature, this essentially means uh, don't make stuff up as much as possible. Make it as, uh, real and realistic and what's another good word for this valid <laughs> as possible okay so the lower the temperature the more valid your output will ultimately be hopefully that's that's the goal of it and you can specify other models in here as well if you want to all right so the first block here that we have is we are utilizing the agent method all right, and notice here how I'm importing it from Crew AI. So it's doing a couple things. This right here, role, goal, backstory, this is pretty much metadata, all right? What should it do, why it's doing it, the name of it, okay? And then the tools. So these are the tools that we're using for searching, okay? So just like any other LLM, it's going out and it's searching on the web for information. That's what we're doing here. And then we're also saying, aside from searching for the information, we also want to use a base model. And in this case, I'm specifying the model here via this variable. Next, this is the job. And that's like the actual execution of this whole thing. Okay. So the description, what I'm expecting the output to be, and then the agent that I'm using, which is specified right here. Okay. 
And then you set up the crew method to run everything, right? So you specify your agent, which comes from the search variable. You specify the task, which comes from the job variable. Verbose, I just want some verbose output. And then the process, I want the output to be sequential, okay? So, you know, don't, don't run it all at the same time, right? Keep it concurrent. And the kickoff command just runs the code, all right? So let's go ahead and see how this works. And I already specified the environment variables here. So if you didn't do that, you'll have to do that. Now, eventually from a production perspective, I want to be able to put these API keys in like Azure Key Vault or something like that, and then call them from the code. All right, so let me run. Well, actually, let me get into my virtual environment here, which you can see I've set up under agent right here, right? So I'm going to say source agent bin activate. All right. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is when utilizing crew AI, I need to not go above Python 3.12. <laughs> okay. So let me go ahead and clear my screen here. I'm going to run Python 3.12 agent main.py all right so the agent this is the name that we gave it this is the task right so this is kind of like uh you typing into a oops sorry this is kind of like you typing into chat gpt or something like that all right using specific tools and then here is the output here so this is a, you know, a bunch of links, all this stuff, but as we get to the end, oh, actually notice here. So it's kind of bonking out a bit. Final answer, the final answer to the original input question. I tried using, I tried reusing the same input and I stopped using the action. I'll try something else instead. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, give this a second. All right. And then boom, it just popped out the final answer. The best region to deploy Kubernetes workloads to based on performance and cost on the specific requirements for the blah, 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 is recommended to use a cloud cost optimization tool to identify the most cost. Okay. So like I said, this is a version, you know, 00001. I just started this. I talked about the end goal in the beginning. This is just the first agent. So at least it's, uh, it's essentially saying to us, Hey, I may not have all the information I need in this agent, but definitely check out a cost, op cost optimization tool. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to have to bring down a model, right? Or fine tune a model in the cloud, like GPT-4 or something, and then use that fine tune information, which I'll feed it a whole bunch of data sets and stuff for it to be able to answer the question better. But notice here, if I scroll up, it is giving me some good information, right? So for example, it's talking about how much Kubernetes costs from a, uh, looks like GKE. And you can see here cost visibility and automated infrastructure cost optimization price at 10 cents per cluster per hour. Right? So again, we got some good information here, but we'll have to fine tune this a little bit, but now you know that you could use an agent to help with some of your day-to-day -day tasks. Right? And again, this is, you know, version 00001. I'm not expecting this to go and solve all of my problems. Like I was talking about in the beginning in terms of choosing the region from a performance cost optimization perspective, it's going to take a fair amount of data to get an agent to that point. And it could end up being multiple agents, but nonetheless, hopefully this will uh, give you an idea on where to get started. If you're in the, you know, DevOps cloud platform engineering space, and you want to start to think about what you can use to implement agents.